In the equestrian world, the Irish hunter is held in great esteem. To those of you unfamiliar with horses, the question is, what is an Irish hunter? Well, simply, an Irish hunter is a type of horse, not a breed. For example, if I were to say I have a guard dog, you might say what type? Well, it could be a German Shepherd, a Doberman, a Rothweiler, or indeed a Chihuahua because all these dogs could technically be a guard dog. But which one is best at its job? Then, of course, the arguments of dog handlers would begin as to which is best. In the Irish horse world, a hunter could be an Irish draft, a Connemara pony, a short-legged cob, a thoroughbred, or really any type of horse. But some would argue that, that the best hunters come from the crossbreeding of a thoroughbred stallion with an Irish draft mare to make what's called, traditionally, the Irish sports horse. This breed is abbreviated to ISH in equestrian competitions and has the balance of speed and athleticism of the thoroughbred and the good temperament and sensibility of the draft horse. And so, whether you have an Irish draft or Irish sports horse as a hunter, they are both legendary for having what's called the fifth leg. That is to say, if you get into a sticky situation, it's as if they suddenly stick out their fifth leg to help you and rescue you from the situation. In ancient Ireland, hunting was done on foot. It was thought that scent hounds were used in heavy undergrowth to flush out their quarry into the open where waiting sighthounds like greyhounds and wolfhounds be let slip from their leads to course or hunt on sight. Those of you who have watched my video on the Irish wolfhound will be familiar with this wolfhound, who used to play with a near horse when she was a foal and liked to think she too was an Irish hunter, which in truth she was. With the arrival of the Normans in the 12th century, with their larger horses, hunting on horseback became common it was seen as an essential part of a knight's training, as the squire was able to develop an eye for uneven ground and improve their balance while riding over undulating country. The hunter was then known as the courser, and in terms of value, was second only to the war horse in terms of price and prestige. The introduction of the Agriculture Enclosure Acts of the 1700s encouraged the formation of hedges and fencing, which provided new obstacles for the hunters to jump, and the Land Commission of the 1880s eventually transferred 13.5 million acres of land to small Irish farm holders by 1920. This created smaller farms with greater numbers of hedges, banks and fences and stone walls to jump. So I am lucky to have an Irish hunter. This is Lily. I bred her as a foal, broke her and brought her on, the three Bs, as you might say. And her training began slowly over small obstacles. Later in the year, she starts to jump with a lead from a Connemara pony. We then switch riders to give her the feel of someone else on her back. Then the first try at crossing water. And with time and care, we are soon crossing country such as banks, drains and hedges. And now she has her own foal. And so I must start all over again. But the kind and sensible nature of the Irish hunter makes this a relatively easy job and is by no means a reflection on my skill as a horseman. Today the Irish sports horse is in great demand for not only equestrian sports such as eventing, but also for police and military use. For example, 97% of the horses used by the Queen's Household Cavalry in London are Irish sports horses with many having had experience in Ireland as hunters. So it follows now as a video I made recently for a hunter show that takes place in County Kildare every year. And it's a duel, I suppose, between a Land Rover 4x4 and a good Irish hunter ridden by an excellent rider. And it shows you the type of country these hunters can cross. And it finishes with a tagline from Land Rover themselves from their 1980s advertising campaign, which I think went over most people's heads, but I'll let you in on that little secret. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And so far, thankfully, Land Rover haven't sued me yet. It is an icon. It has a heritage that stretches through generations, built for crossing country rather than speed. 
it is tough and reliable, and made right here in Ireland. It is, of course, the Irish Hunter. The Irish Hunter <laughs> The best 4x4 four by, four by far Thank you for watching but please like and subscribe as this will encourage future productions